Hey, how's it going everybody? My name is Cosmin and in today's video you are going to learn how to create a texture brush in Adobe Illustrator in just a few steps and turn this illustration into this. So what do you need in order to get started and create a texture brush in Adobe Illustrator? Well, you need a piece of paper. Hopefully you guys have some like this laying around the house and I'm going to use this to draw with a marker. This is a pretty basic marker. I'm guessing you have something like $1, nothing too crazy. What you need to do in order to get started is create a line in the middle pretty pretty standard stuff and then keep doing lines on top of it to create some kind of a texture i would say the height should be a, around two two fingers so nothing too major but i would recommend just going pretty lightly on top of it because we're going to use this to actually trace it in adobe illustrator and actually define the base right what I want you to be careful about is the ends here. Of course, we're going to do a couple of adjustments there, but I would like to have some kind of a separation here. So it's not something that goes over. Let's do it a couple more times. This is it. This is what we're going to use in the actual tutorial. I took some photos of the drawing <laughs> we just did with the marker and now I'm going to bring that up into Illustrator. And we'll need to create a new document. Create a new document. I'll select the web large one. Let's name it Texture Brush because this is where we'll create it. Hit Create and let's close off the brushes panel because I would like to see the artwork. Go to View. Make sure to have Snap to Pixel disabled. And then I'm going to take the photo and drag it on the canvas here. So this is the photo. It's a bit large. Let me rotate it a bit and make it smaller. I'm holding down shift to make it smaller and keep the same ratio. Once you have the image with it selected, go to image trace and from the options panel, select the black and white logo. Tracing my proceed slowly. Don't care. <laughs> Let's do it. Okay. So we don't have anything. That's why you need to go to the tracing panel. And from here you can adjust the threshold. And now you start seeing uh, the brush. This is a bit too much because it's, it's working against us and it gets merged with some of the background. So just slightly less. This should be fine for our our initial base. Let me see what I can do here. Adjust the pads, have a higher pad count, lower corner noise. I don't know what that does. Anyways, let's go to expand. Now that I've expanded, double click to enter the group and start removing some of the elements that are outside the, the brush stroke. Then because I want to have somehow of a <laughs> like more of a consistent look, I'll copy and paste in front, command C, command F, and then rotate it to create some like this. So now I have the same thing overlaid on top of each other and this is a pretty good way to start this let's go to the window and pathfinder window i'll hit merge so we have one single element adjust just the just slightly adjust some of the rotation right click and go to transform and reset bounding box to see how this how this brush looks right now this is the base of the brush i want to add more texture to it so how do i do that well i go to unsplash and i start searching for anything that has texture so for example i'll search for dust these are all uh, royalty free images so you can actually use them for free in any commercial work let's try something different this is pretty interesting but it has this weird skew yeah let's try it out so i'll zoom in and then what i'm going to do is actually take a screenshot of this thing then go back to illustrator and i'm going to place that actual screenshot here i'm dragging it from a different monitor rotate it around because i only need this so i don't need anything else i only need that part rotate it around go to tracing options and again go to black and white logo and <laughs> you get something like this of course we need more 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 definition that's why I play with these options again the number of paths should be higher corner is lower let's see what noise does i want more, more noise yes yeah, i'm like that that's that's way better but once you have this go to expand double click to enter the group and with the magic wand i'll select only the dark elements and while holding down the shift key i'll select everything else and now i only have the white parts remove them of course i could have just <laughs> selected the white part but that's just the way i work okay so i would like to have some kind of a more level look i'm going to duplicate this holding down all rotate it around fill that area over here so right now you only have uh, these parts right this looks better let's select everything and merge them and now i don't even though i kind of like this part let's see what i can do with that part with that small arm over there let's see if i can have the direct selection tool and remove everything what's going to happen this is pretty good take this yeah i don't really need these ones 
just because it's making the illustration look bigger and I don't like this shape. So I'm usually double clicking just to get inside a particular shape. Let's merge everything again. We don't need the bottom part, I remove it. Let's see where we can place this texture wider just to cover more ground, something like this. Then I'm going to duplicate it by holding down Alt key. Rotate it, see, but now you have these uh, patterns repeating. So double click to go inside it. I'm actually going to remove, damn it, it doesn't work. Okay, I'm going to remove that. Now I'm pretty happy with how this looks, but I still want more texture to it. I still want more, uh, more noise, go to Unsplash. And from here, let's search for sand. Yeah, so I'm going to use something like this to get texture. Right click, copy image, paste it in and go to image trace. Let's see what it's going to do as the default. Hopefully it's going to do a black and white one. Yep, black and white it is. Go to the panel. Again, play around with the threshold. I need less noise because that's what gives me, gives me a lot of paths. Yeah, this is way too much. I'm going to make the threshold smaller just so I can isolate things better. This is still too much. Okay, let's Im improve the noise number. Okay, I'm happier with this one. Go to expand. Again, double click to get inside it and select the white parts now. <laughs> no need to do the other <laughs> technique and remove it. Now we have a lot of uh, these elements. So I'm going to re resize it. It doesn't really matter how you resize them. And I'm going to start taking, taking parts of it and placing it in the brush. We need to ungroup it first, ungroup it again, because apparently <laughs> one time is not enough. And I'm holding down the Alt key to make a duplicate of that particular part, right? And I'm making adjustments just to add more, just to add a little bit more of definition there. Let's take this part, we need to place it at, at the ends. Now that was a bit too much. The skew, the skew wasn't correct. Let's see how this looks. Yeah, looks looks better. Now I'm going to select everything at the top and try to make it smaller in height. And I need to somehow connect uh, these parts. So I don't want I don't want this to be so uh, so disproportionate. So I'm going to take these parts, make it bigger, right? Maybe have another another go at it, just because I want to fill in that spot, right? So I, I wanted something like that instead of having these elements because I want wherever they meet, I want them to, to connect. Okay, I've selected this, let's group it and I'm going to make a duplicate of it. Copy and paste it again, to make a duplicate again. And this way we're going to close off this part of the, of the brush. The way it looks right now, so I hate this part just because it, it isn't really consistent. So I'll need to slightly adjust everything. Okay, so I'm going to select these parts. Unselect, I'm holding down shift and I'm unselecting the main shape. Removing those, right? And these should be lower down. Let's see how, how this one is oriented right now. So need to bring it up. Let's add more, more texture here. So I'm making a lot of duplicates just because I, I want to have more definition and all of these should probably be merged. So let's see once I merge everything, how it's going to look. Merge, perfect. Now I'm going to sample the color and merge it again, just because I don't want any kind of empty, empty fields. So this is how it looks right now. Take that element out. I also don't like that element. Okay, copy and paste this, place it on top as well. So that's going to give us a more, more. Now I'm going to copy and paste in front the whole thing. Hold down shift to rotate it around. And this is going to give us a better look, more consistent look. You can even select both, copy and paste them, rotate them around as well. That's going to give you a more, more consistent brush. Now I have this, merge it. The only thing I don't like are these parts, right? They don't look good just because it feels like it's going to be hard 
for them to connect so with the direct selection tool i'm going to select everything and move it back same thing here move it back whenever you have elements that are standing out like these ones use the direct selection tool to remove them okay now i have the brush i, I feel pretty happy with it, the way it looks it's a bit skewed as you can see right here there's some space and right here there isn't I need to slightly readjust right click go to transform reset bounding box and i feel like this is this is better this is what i'm going to use as the base for the brush let's remove this because i don't need it anymore but before we create the brush one thing i would like to mention is i would recommend you merging everything that way you have just one shape that's black so i recommend doing that multiple times if it doesn't work so for example now that i've selected it right you still have these weird uh, settings go to object expand fill and stroke then hit merge right because you might have some stroked outlines that are blocking you from doing that now you have the brush this is the brush i'm going to use what i'm going to do before i save it just because i don't want my computer to crash whenever i'm going to use this brush because it has so many elements right it has so much texture to it i want to simplify it so right now uh, check this out so if you go to help you can find it here but you can also go to object path and here you can find the simplify option this one has about 6000 points when it's on auto what i recommend doing is go to the lower to the lowest possible <laughs> path count that way you only have a thousand points right now right simplified merge it sample the color merge it again sample the color go to object expand all of that stuff just to get one single element okay so you got one single element let's see how many simplify keep in mind that you can find this brush i'm going to include it in my pack so it's going to be a bonus brush so on top of everything that you're going to get if you get the brush you're going to get grain brushes noise brushes you're also going to get this brush as well and you can use it in your own illustration in your own time so now we have the base of the brush we're going to use that to actually define it inside the illustrator and save it up so we can use it on our illustration let's jump into illustrator and here we have the brush base that's being defined right one thing i would like to do before we save it up take the rectangle tool and i want to get rid of all of these elements on the sides just because when i'm going to save it it probably won't connect just because you have small elements in between so it will look weird if you're going to use a circle or anything like that so to remove that i'll create a circle sample a white color this way i can cut off the edges and i'm actually going to have a connection between these select everything go to the window pathfinder window select merge double click i want to make sure that i keep all of the uh, black shapes so with it selected hold down shift so you can select all of the other elements remove them and this is a good base for for our brush now this brush is a bit too big for this document what i'm going to do i'm going to scale it down something like that should be better and then go to window brushes because we need to save it from the brushes panel let's drag it to the center click on create new brush and select the art brush option from there you need to name it texture brush bonus keep in mind that you can you can find it in my pack and set the stretch to fit the stroke length that's fine and the colorization needs to be tints that way you can apply different colors different shades to, to it hit ok and now you have it saved over here don't click on it because it's going to apply it to this element and it's going to kill your computer okay <laughs> okay and now now i need to bring in the illustration so i have it set on a different monitor this is the illustration we're going to work with it's a flat illustration of a fox i found it on envato elements and i'm going to use this as an example right let's make a duplicate and now i'm going to start start making changes to it what I want to do is minimize the number of colors I'm using. First off, I need to ungroup it. Apparently, you can just start uh, once I ungrouped everything. Yes, it looks good. I'm going to use uh, white for these parts. And then we have 
these colors which are orange and then we have the nose which is brown i guess okay so let's save these colors up so in the swatches panel with them selected make sure to save them as a global block uh, global color that way you can save it up i'm not sure what's up with this color let's remove it then let's save up the light orange and the dark orange now we have all of the colors that are necessary the way i'm going to go about it is select the white elements for example and from the swatches panel click on the stroke to have the stroke selected and apply the same color to the stroke as well so now you have a white stroke right it's a basic brush but once you apply the texture brush you're actually going to get something like this right uh, let's make it smaller in size and whenever you're going to see some like this This means that those two ends don't connect the right way. So instead of having a connection like this The anchor points have handles that are pointed like that I'll take the direct selection tool and round this off, right? So if you round it up, then You will look you will look great. This is too much, but I need to do something about this one as well. Yeah, looks good then for the elements that have the light orange applied to them, I'll do the same thing, select them, then have the brush, play around with the size of the, of the brush, just because you don't want it to be too much, right? As you can see, like you can already have a lot of definition and more character to your character using these kinds of brushes. For this one, I need to select the dark one, make it smaller in size. So this already gives it like a hand-drawn look. I'll do the same thing here, apply a stroke, and then have the texture brush. Looks good. I also need to add the same thing here. So let's do that and see how it looks. <laughs> yeah, this doesn't look ideal, but it can be fixed, believe me. So we need to make it smaller in, in size, right? So something like 0.5, but there are a lot of glitches going on, right? Let's round this off and whenever you see something like that, maybe add anchor points and remove the old ones. Hmm, I'm curious what what makes it look look that way. <laughs> okay, I'm going to add some pads here and remove these ones. Now you have a small smile. I think this looks way better. <laughs> and now we need to figure out what we're going to do with uh, this shape just because there are so many glitches. Uh, so with the, sh with the pad selected, I'm going to go in and I'll probably re remove this one, right? Yeah, so I'm removing any kind of straight angle. As you can see, this stroke is way too much for how small this element is. Let's do the same thing for the mouth just because it was uh, way too much. The last element I want to place this texture brush is on the actual background. On the background shape with the selected, select the dark color cool. and then you can see like over here you can see some of the texture this looks pretty good as a progression of the illustration i feel like it has way more character and it feels like a like a hand-drawn element what i want to do is add some kind of shadows the way i'm going to actually do that i'm probably going to add shadows only to the nose and to the darker elements so with it selected Let's select the paintbrush. Is it the paintbrush? Yeah, the paintbrush tool and create a stroke. It has the same color, but I need to make it a bit bigger. And from the opacity panel, go to multiply, maybe have something like 20%. Now with the selected, I'll hit command left bracket a couple of times till it gets behind, behind the elements. I'll do the same thing for the ear, same thing, send it to the back. For the nose, I need to have the same color. Let's go to multiply and of course I need to uh, I need to make it a bit bigger and from the opacity go to multiply and 20% something like that okay so just in a matter of seconds you can add some kind of uh, shadow uh, shadow definition right so this was my process of defining a texture brush in Adobe Illustrator and then using it to define uh, an illustration and make it look a bit a bit better uh, thank you so much for watching I hope you learned something new today. Uh, don't forget to like this video so more people could see it and subscribe for more. See you in the next video. Bye!